I just built an AI agent that lets me analyze all of X's data in real time. And I didn't have to do anything special like web scraping or doing some form of manual work. All I had to do was combine bold.new, anyden, and a brand new service from Grok called the Live Search API. And with just these three tools, I was able to create an app that allows you to pull live posts from any X account analyze general sentiment or community sentiment, and even track the most trending memes. It can give me the full pulse about what influencers and the people are talking about. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through exactly how I design, built, and deploy this app step-by-step. Step. And even if you don't end up rebuilding my app, just knowing how the service works that no one's talking about will instantly level up both your apps and your automated workflows. Let's dive right in. So what did I even build? Now, I call this the interactive alert system. And even though the name leaves a lot to be desired, the app itself is pretty cool. So if I asked a general question and I'll dictate it and I said, can you check with the developer community and the AI automation community in general and see how people are feeling about the brand new Google Gemini video three model, which is the new video model. Let me just make sure it's spelled correctly. Okay. And if I send ask, what this is going to do is it's going to trigger a workflow in any then to talk to my pulse agent, which has access to all of these different tools. One of them is to double check and see what the community on X is feeling about a particular topic. It also consults with the updates from key leaders where I've basically listed a, a series of handles that I want to cross reference. And the result of this workflow looks something like this. So on the front end, we see a response that analyzed all the general vibes and posts from X to understand what people are thinking about when it comes to this particular topic. So if we take a read, it says developer and AI community sentiment around Google Gemini V03 reveals a complex and nuanced reaction. Developers are both intrigued and cautious about the capabilities. And while the model demonstrates impressive multimodal reasoning, there are quote, significant architectural challenges. And then as you go down, you'll see different accounts reference in terms of their opinions and responses, as well as an overall summary and TLDR. And what's cool is we can actually reference directly from the API, the citations. So if we right click and go on this particular link here, it should bring us to the actual underlying post where it retrieved and rooted this information. And last but not least, if you had a particular topic that you want to cross reference just a handful of creators on the platform in terms of their opinions on the matter, you could ask something like, what are the general sentiments around AGI and when it's coming according to the tech leaders? You could send that over, click send alert. And if we go here, it should go to the updates from tech leaders where we have a handful of specific handles we're cross-referencing. So if we go back to the front end, we should get a pop-up shortly that shows us the response. And as you can see here, we have specific posts from Elon Musk, Greg Brockman of OpenAI, as well as Andre Karpathy, and then some key takeaways from those specific accounts. And if we were to go to any one of these, let's say Greg Brockman's, and right click on this link, it should take us directly to this post specifically where there's some mention of AGI. So what's interesting with the Live Search API is it has some nuanced understanding. So it will get a general quote unquote vibe response based on going through threads and specific posts. So now that we know that it works, let's take a look under the hood and see how I designed it and more importantly, how it works. So once again, I built this product in bolt.new and what I did is to alleviate myself from going back and forth quite a few times, I built the general shell in bolt and then connected it to Superbase and then used an edge function to just send all the data that I sent from here, which is pretty much just the questions from a specific category or the general search bar to any den. Once it's in any den, then we receive the response here to the incoming webhook. This incoming webhook goes to the pulse agent, which has a very bespoke prompt that'll go through shortly. And then it goes through and decides which tool or tools it should consult before returning back to the response using Anthropics 3.5 Sonnet. And after it runs, the data is sent to this webhook here, which will send it back to Bolt and basically boomerang our request and pop up that response with the citations and whatever response the Anthropic model came up with here. Next up, I'll go through how we figured out how to call the new Live Search API. So to figure out how to use the Live Search API from Grok, I went to my go-to tool for quick and dirty research, Perplexity, and asked it to look up the latest documentation about that API from Grok. 
Now to make sure it wouldn't hallucinate and go to random APIs, I just gave it the direct link in the prompt and then it went and researched all the documentation. Once we had the documentation, I asked it to do something that would make my life way easier to get started in any then. I basically asked it to create what are called curl requests and a series of those curl requests. And if you don't know what those are, I'll show you shortly. But it's basically like compressing or creating a mini zip file for how you call an API in general. So instead of looking up what the different endpoints are, how to call them, where to put your API key, what you need to use with your API key to make it work, and basically manually fill out all these different fields and edit in, I used curl to shortcut that way, cheat time, and let me just copy paste those requests and run and test it right away. Once that was all sorted, we were pretty much ready to go in any then from a structure standpoint, and all I had to do was really dial in that prompt so that the agent would know which tool and which method to use depending on the situation as well as the query. So once the any then workflow was fully finished and ready to go, we added a webhook to hopefully connect that and hook it up to bolt.new. Now step one was obviously to design the user interface, so I went back and forth to get the look and feel that I was going for. And once I had that, the second step was to add Superbase. And again, we were not gonna use Superbase here to have edge functions to execute this API call. I wanted to use Superbase just to be able to connect to EditN so I could hook it up to this AI agent in a way where I could make whatever changes I wanted on the automation itself and not have to worry about consistently updating Superbase if changes had to be made. Once I got the webhook address, which is pretty much the ear that we're listening in for in EditN for any form of data coming from Bolt, I set up and deployed this edge function from Bolt itself. It wrote the code. All I had to do was say, hey, take all the data that you get as input and just put it towards this specific endpoint. Now in this section, there was a little bit of nuance that I actually want to highlight right now. So if we go into the actual user interface, like I said, if you click on and select ask anything, you can send a request and whatever happens, happens. You leave it up to the judgment of the AI agent where that specific request is rooted to. But if we wanted to send a direct request and make sure that there's a high likelihood of receiving a response from the tech updates portion from the specific handles or breaking news or get specifically memes and trends or historical events, then we try to add additional what's called metadata from these specific boxes. So what that means in plain English, and it'll be a lot easier to see, is if I send a request from here, let's say, find me breaking news on AI, and I do send alert, okay? This will send it back to our NADN. And if we just jump out of here and go into NADN, I don't care for the actual process that's running. I actually care just to show you the web hook that we received. So you'll see here at the very bottom, we have metadata that I asked Bolt to create in the edge function that says, hey, this is coming from the tool called news and it's from the category called breaking news. And I feed these both as inputs to the AI agent to tell it, I think that you should use these to help you understand which tools at your disposal you should use. Whereas if I ask a general question, like what does the world think about OpenAI? And we say ask, this will send it in a very different way. So if we go back to that workflow and double click this webhook, you'll see if we scroll to the very bottom here, that all we have is just the question and a timestamp. We don't have a category, subcategory, or any form of tool description, because this is just going in general. And I expect that our request being sent here will talk to a series of tools. Just like this one, this OpenAI question went to the updates from tech leaders, real-time breaking news, multi-source analysis, and then it went back to the AI model here. So I wanted to zero in on that specific category because when it comes to building these kinds of web applications, it's important to be as intentional as possible and give as many clues to your AI agent in this case to increase the likelihood that you get the outcome exactly that you're looking for. So once your workflow is hooked up to Bolt.new and there's a good connection between the webhook that you're sending the data to, then there's only one more tricky part that pops up. And this isn't specific to Bolt.new, it's pretty much a problem with Lovable, Bolt, and any vibe coding app. And this is what's called a cores error, which in plain English means you send a request. So you enter whatever you're asking for from X, and then it sends that request, and then the actual processing time for any then it's kind of variable. Sometimes it can take 20 seconds, sometimes 40 seconds. But Bolt maybe, or Superbase, is waiting for the response either instantly or within seconds. So then there's some form of mismatch. And you get these what are called cores errors, where it's waiting for a response, but it's not waiting long enough. So you have to go back and forth a couple times to tell Bolt, hey, I think that you should wait at least 40 seconds 
for this response because on average, this workflow is taking anywhere between 10 to 30 seconds. Once that works, then you're pretty much good to go on the major app development and then you can just worry about connecting everything together to make sure your super base is speaking properly to your NADN, which is speaking back to your app and you have a full symbiosis of that ecosystem. Now, like I said before, to actually figure out how to manipulate and use this live search API from Grok, you could use Perplexity or any tool that lets you do deep research or even light research. So if we zoom into the actual prompt here, it's pretty straightforward, but it's also very potent at the same time. So I said, please research the latest live search API from Grok and provide me with multiple CURL requests, curl requests, that would allow me to quickly set up HTTP requests to use this app and cross-reference specific AI leader handles, as well as retrieve meme post links. Now, in actuality, I have four more functions that I was going for, but just to show you a sample, this is what I would send. And then I would give it the link of the URL from the guide we have right here, right here. And once we do that, it's gonna come back with a little bit of a summary or soliloquy about what this API does, which never hurts to understand. And then it comes back with this request that again, starts with curl. If you're not a developer, if you're not tech savvy, if you don't work that often with no code tools, this might not need, mean much to you, but this will help you a lot more than it telling you, send this to this URL with this method and then use your API key. And before you add your API key, add this word called bearer. In this case, you could go down and just copy this and you can actually import it directly into NADN and have it all set up for you. Now, what does that look like? If I go into NADN, I will recreate a lot of that workflow really quickly. Now, will it work on a first shot? No. But if we do the AI agent module, right, we hook it up here and we want it to add a chat model, let's say Anthropic, we can add that here. And then we can bring just one tool as an example, an HTTP request. And instead of manually having to figure out, do I do a get, do I do a post? What do those words mean? I can go right here to import curl. And then I can just paste that blob of text we just received, import it. And then it will set up pretty much everything from the method, the URL, the headers that we need to send. It'll put a placeholder for where you should get your API key which by the way, if you just put X API key, let's say uh, X console right here, actually API key, it'll take you to this repository right here. We can create an API key, take that, paste it right here and in any of the other requests you send. And at the very bottom, it even takes the liberty of drafting out exactly what JSON should go here, as well as put a sample dummy piece here when it comes to find content. So if I was to run this on its own, let me just disconnect this and we double click and click execute step. I'm going to add my API key and just show you how easy it is to run. And now if we run this and click on execute step, it should be able to send this request and retrieve a response specific to this question, which is find recent posts and mentions about Jan LeCun, Andrew Ng and Elon Musk related to AI developments. And if you go down, you'll see the content here. I've reviewed the most recent information available and here's some information specific to those specific individuals. I said specific five times. And then you see a series of citations here. These are the citations of some of them are news and some of them are X specific. And just like that, you could run multiple curl requests, import them, then hook them up all to the AI agent module. And then you'd be able to recreate my workflow literally within a few minutes. Now the last piece of the puzzle here is just the underlying prompt. And we won't read it in full depth, but just to give you an idea of what it looks like, I'll go through the general structure. So I say you are Pulse, an intelligent information curator who finds real-time insights from X, AKA Twitter. And I put it in brackets because when I think about language models, their cutoff is as of 2023, and I forget whether or not they were able to train on whether Twitter and X are the same thing, but just in case I like to throw it in brackets. Your job is to execute the appropriate tool based on the metadata provided. Now you'll notice that some of these JSONs are in red and some of them are in green. Now, why does this make sense? Like I said before, when we send it from the categories themselves on that web page, it adds additional metadata. When we send it from the general search bar, it doesn't. So I just had to make sure that this prompt was flexible to know that this sometimes might be empty. And this is where it 
it really matters to go the extra mile on prompt engineering because the better you can prompt your agent on what to expect in terms of behavior, the better it's able to accommodate on the fly. And as you go down here, I give an example cheat sheet of when to use each type of tool and mapping. So when to use the tech update or tech leader, when to use the fine memes and trends, when to use real time breaking news, etc. And then if you go to the bottom, I go through the execution steps. They should check whether or not there's any form of metadata that exists. If there is metadata, then try and route that to that specific tool. And then if we go down here at the very bottom, it goes through what it must include, a direct answer to the user's questions, include actual quotes, numbers, dates, or concrete examples, no generic statements, and no tool name references or disclaimers. At the beginning, both would show in the response, according to the Pulse agent, this is what it came up with, which wasn't really good for the user experience. And at the bottom here, I gave an example of what I think is a good response and what I think is a bad response. And then when it comes to citations, I told it what I care for primarily are citations related to x.com, not from a random news site. And last thing, this is more frustration, is it kept saying some more generic stuff. So I said, forbidden phrases, never use based on the tool, never say the community seems, never say discussions highlight, basically all these kind of word jargons and fluff. And once that was put together, after enough testing, I was able to validate it, hook it up, and now we have a tool that at my fingertips, I can get a general sentiment for what people are thinking about on a particular topic, a particular tool, or any trend that's happening pretty much every day. On the Volt side, I had to go back and forth quite a few times, and some of my prompts were not exactly exemplary. So what I did is I went through my entire conversation and I tried to recreate using meta prompting what I could have said to make it a much easier conversation. And I came up with these series of instructions that you could use if you want to build an app similar to the one I put together. And that's pretty much it. So if you want access to this guide as well as the underlying edit and template, I'm going to make them available in the first link in the description below. But if you want a version of that workflow that you can directly chat with, I've already set that up for my exclusive community members in the early AI adopters community, as well as we've now hired a full-time coach to offer five sessions a week, one-on-one -on -one, to help you get unstuck from things like Bolt, Lovable, Superbase, and all the different kinks that happen inevitably on this journey of building these kinds of apps. If that interests you, check the second link in the description below and maybe we'll see you inside. I'll see you next time.